everyone, it's me, Chuck, from Chuck Knows Church, with another simple idea during this time of crisis. There are things we can do. We can all recall the pastor or church leader announcing, uh, and next week is bring a friend to church week. So what do we do with that in these times of crisis? With many congregations offering online worship services, it's now easier than ever to invite a friend to church. Just send them a link and a personal note like, I'd like to invite you to my church's online worship service. And if they mention they watched, there's a chance to start the conversation. What did they think? Discuss the message. Ask good questions. Did you grow up in the church? What was that like? Maybe in the conversation saying, if you need anything else, please. Let me know.
I'm Pastor Cherie Forrett from Trinity Church here in Beaver Dam, and I'm glad to welcome you to worship this morning, this fourth Sunday of Easter. We hope this finds you safe and well and enjoying the sunshine of this spring day. And I am Darian Nelson, your worship host for today, and I am so blessed and honored to be joining you for our service. We're hoping that you are experiencing no te technical difficulty this morning, but if you do, remember you can find the recorded service on the website after it is shared. This service will also be broadcast at 11 a.m. on WBEV. Today's service was sponsored by a generous anonymous donor. Thank you so much. We give thanks to Mike Mangan for leading the hymns from his home this morning and for Kit's presence with us today providing music. We're also grateful for the gifts of our tech crew shared so generously with us throughout this time. We are also grateful for all the efforts of people who keep our ministry going for lunches that were assembled for the playground movement last weekend, for deliveries made this week. Our community is blessed by your care. And there's an opportunity to gather online for coffee hour this week by Zoom conferencing that will begin at 10.30 a.m. this morning. So we hope you'll meet us there in the coffee hour and everybody will have a small group that they'll have opportunity to talk with. Let's take this time as our service begins now to sign in on the website to let us know that you're here or you can comment on the Facebook page. There is also a worship guide you can download with info about what's going on at Trinity Church right now. We've got three online studies beginning. The first is how the New Testament came to be. The second is learning life rhythms from Jesus to help us deal with anxiety. And finally, the last one is how to connect our faith with care of the earth. And now there will be a brief musical interlude to take some time to greet each other in comments on Facebook, sign in on the website, and just have opportunity to rejoice in the day. a moment to join me in our opening prayer. Loving Shepherd, some days we feel threats all around us. Gather us to yourself that we might dwell secure in your ways. Deliver us from evil that we might build a community where all may dwell secure. Mark our fellowship with study, prayer, communion, and the sharing of our possessions with those in need. Amen. One of my favorite things about worshiping here at Trinity Church is that we are blessed with so many talented musicians. And today we will be hearing from one as Josh Hunick shares Brethren, We Have Met to Worship, an instrumental solo. Mm-hmm. 
is the prayer book of the Hebrew Bible and the psalm that is set for this week is almost everybody's favorite Psalm 23 it's the psalm many of us were taught as children we memorized it it's the psalm I read at many people's funerals because it was their favorite but I suspect the words that are in the 23rd Psalm also help us in everyday life especially these days in this time of pandemic they're words we need to hang on to, even as our lives um, experience so many different things we've never had happen to us before. Psalm 23 is exactly what's needed when we need to be reminded of God as a shepherd watching over us. And the flock of sheep that we are sometimes um, is in danger from predators. Sometimes we wander in different directions and still other times we get caught up in the fears of the moment. And that's when we need to remember that God is with us at all times, in all places, and in all things. So let's hear together today the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me on right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The words of that psalm lift all of our hearts in prayer as individuals, and now we'll take some time to pray for others, a time of intercessory prayer. After each petition of prayer, I'll pause so you can name out loud or in the silence of your hearts anyone that comes to mind during that petition. So let us now enter into a time of prayer in the presence of one another and with our God. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, the vigilant shepherd of our lives, today we pray for persons who are finding their way to walk with your flock, discovering your help for their life's journey. And today we pray for persons who have lost their way you, as the shepherd, will go out to find them we know, we trust, and invite them to join the flock, to walk the journey with them. Today we pray for faithful servants who prepare to lay down their burdens in this life and go home to be with you, provide the comfort of your presence and your love. Today we pray for those who struggle with illness of body, mind, and soul. May they feel your healing hand upon them, Lord, or you carrying them through difficult times.
Today we pray for those who are grieving loss. May those who mourn find comfort knowing that their loved ones have gone on to be in your care. Today we give thanks for the ways you gather us in your care, Lord. As members of your flock, even beyond this place, we rejoice in the opportunity to follow your Son together. Your Son who goes before us to show us the way, who inspires us with his life, who examples how to live on this earth together, and who continually shares grace with all of us who strive to follow him. Together this day, may we lift up the words of prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now please take some time to either join in singing or listening to a favorite hymn entitled, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. I'm hoping you have a moment to grab your Bible and join me. They joined with the other believers and devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, sharing in the Lord's Supper and in prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, 
and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together constantly and shared everything they had. They sold their possessions and shared the proceeds with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I love living here where I can see American white pelicans circling over Beaver Dam Lake during this season. I hope that you've seen them too. Because if not, you've got to get out and take a look for those big white birds that have black tip wings and fly in formation, circling and looping all together. They look as though they're having a great time coasting on the air currents together. They look like they're playing. Flying together, they're practicing what is called collective behavior, when individuals act as one. That's most visible in birds as we see geese flying in V-shaped formation when they're migrating, or a flock of starlings swooping through the air almost as though in a pattern before they nest for the night. Birds do this because it's easier. It creates less wind resistance for those flying behind the leaders and they take turns leading. Sometimes that's why people do this as well. It's often the path of least resistance to do what everyone else is doing. But sometimes we, as Jesus' followers, need to make a choice to act differently than the rest of the world. Since the first disciples, there have been times that disciples did not do what everybody else was doing, like worshiping God instead of the Roman emperor, or speaking to neighbors with love rather than arguing or speaking hatefully when we must resist going along with the world, we're strengthened by being able to do that together, by having collective behavior that we practice together as the body of Christ. Today's scripture is from the book called The Acts of the Apostles. And it tells us about the early community that Jesus' followers made in Jerusalem after he descended into heaven. It's a glimpse of what that community was able to do by the power of the Holy Spirit poured out upon them. And what happened between them was so unusual, it created awe, almost fear, when the signs and wonders the apostles performed drew their community together to continue Jesus' ministry. What was most awe-inspiring was that everybody agreed on what was important everybody shared common understanding. Scripture tells us all who believed were together and had all things in common. The Greek definition of friendship in that day was holding all things in common. This account describes a community held together by common beliefs and values, not just by saying they had those beliefs and values, the community was living those beliefs and values in what they prioritized, like passing on Jesus' teaching, sharing relationships in fellowship, strengthening those relationships as they shared food and goods, and praying together. All as a community, all of those things happened with them in community together because they were committed to caring for one another's spiritual and physical well-being. Their community was modeled on Jesus' ministry, and they agreed together on what was most important, rare even in that day. 
This was after all the drama of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon them at Pentecost. Pentecost was a one-time dramatic moment. And now this is a glimpse of what everybody hoped would happen for the ordinary everyday lives of Christians, of people who follow Jesus. Back in Jesus' time, Jewish families and friends and neighbors would go to worship together and then afterwards they'd share a meal that was symbolic of their social and spiritual relationship that they shared between them. And early Christians continued those traditions. Probably for the same reason some of our folks in our community go out to breakfast after worship in the times we have opportunity to do that, though not lately. Just as others have the tradition of taking time to share coffee hour, another thing we're missing right now. We do those things because it strengthens the relationships we have between us. And when we're taking a look at what we do together as Christians, we consider whether what we're doing strengthens our community of faith. Does it help build relationships of fellowship between us? Does it help us share what we have together, our food and our goods? Does it help us pray together? Overall, does it care for our spiritual and physical well-being together? I'm so glad for all the things we can continue to do that offer care for the well-being of our community. Because when we're part of one body together, the behavior we choose to collectively practice together affects the whole body. In this time of pandemic, that shows up in incredibly literal ways. As much as we all want to give each other a hug right now when we see each other, we know we can't because it might pass on more than the loving spirit we intend with that. But these days there are times we struggle in other ways to hold all things in common and work out what's most important. It can be hard for us to agree on what we think and what we say and what we do as we walk the journey of our lives these days. We know that right now in our state, and in our country, we don't all agree on the next steps of our pandemic response. There are many perspectives. We may be especially concerned for keeping everybody safe, especially the most vulnerable people in our community. Others among us are concerned about the need to reopen our economy concerned about the stores and services that are the livelihood of people all around us, the farmers, the hairdressers, the restaurants, the retailers. We won't be able to name all the professions, professions and segments of our economy that have been so profoundly affected by this. But this is more complicated than just two views on this as we also hear concern for persons required to do essential work to keep things going, who are fearful for their own lives and the health of their families. Christ, first and foremost, calls us to care for, for vulnerable people throughout our community. Vulnerability looks many different ways these days, from compromised immune systems, to families struggling to feed kids, to people who are just plain feeling threatened. Let's remind ourselves that all people are equally important to our God. And God also invites us to treat all people equally important in our lives. We too as the church want things to get back to normal faster than we're going to get there. But to be truly part of a community of disciples that holds all things in common, we have to find a way to care for the spiritual and physical well-being of one another. Let's not force each other into choosing lives over livelihoods. Livelihoods can somehow be rebuilt, but lives lost cannot be restored. In the days ahead, it may not be easy to find 
what all of us hold in common together. That's been rare since the beginning of Christianity, awe-inspiring when it happens. But I do believe that we can keep working towards that with God's help. And the way forward together is somewhere in the tension of these discussions we're having between us right now. May we continue to live as friends in Christ. And we, may we leave behind anything that gets in the way of that. And in doing so, may we find what we must do together, the collective behavior of people who follow Christ. God will guide us to that if we trust God in all things. Amen. I would now like to invite you to a time of reflection and offering. Let us consider what we can offer to support the ministry of Jesus Christ's church, wherever and whenever we can. Please support the ministry of your church, wherever and whenever you can. Trinity Church receives gifts on the website via the Donate Now button or through the Giving Plus app by finding our church in our zip code or by a check mailed to 308 Oneida Street, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, 53916. Let us now enter a time of reflection as we consider ways to offer help and support. While Kit plays, my shepherd will supply my need.
please join me in our prayer of dedication. Holy One, touch us with the awe that came upon those early disciples as they beheld the signs and wonders performed in their midst by the apostles. May the gifts we offer this day be a remembrance of their commitment to share all things in common. In Jesus' name, amen. In the United Methodist Church, the sacrament of communion is an open sacrament. That means the Lord's table is open to all people, and we invite everybody to be part of this sharing, just as Jesus did. We know that Jesus didn't worry about ordering special bread or what was in the cup that he was sharing with his disciples. Jesus was simply asking to be remembered. He asked to be remembered in simple, everyday sharing with items that his disciples would have shared at every meal they ate. So whatever you choose to share with others, as we have on our altar today, we know that the Lord will be glad for the sharing, and what you do will be just right. Because Jesus was most concerned about the relationships people shared between them, putting their relationship with God first, and then getting relationships with each other right, is what he calls us to do. So at this time, when we're apart, to take best care of the health of everybody, not being together to share communion today feels strange. So let's take some time now to just close our eyes for a minute and think about the people that we usually share communion with in our faith community, wherever you are. And let us ask God to forge new relationships of care and understanding between us. We can do that by first confessing anything that comes between us and our God. So we'll turn to Darianne now to lead us in a prayer of confession. Christ, our shepherd and gate, we would rather chart our own course than be shepherd like sheep. We would rather find our own way than see you as the way. We would rather be shepherds than sheep who are vulnerable and exposed. Forgive us when we bleat out our resistance as you guide us to higher pastures. Be our gate, our way to safe havens, where we can dwell with you secure. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance. The one who anoints our heads with oil, the one who feeds us while our enemies look on, the one who delivers us from evil, invites us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On the night Jesus gathered up his disciples before he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to God. And then he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat for this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God. And then he offered it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup so that they may be for us the body and blood of Jesus our Christ and so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed and sanctified by his blood as we walk the journey of following Jesus Christ together. Amen. As you share the elements you're using for communion together this day, please know that whatever you have with you, God will make right. The important thing is to remember the sacrifice Jesus made on behalf of all of us. So whether you're by yourself 
or you're sharing with others, please hear the words that we use to share the Lord's table together. Body of Christ broken for you, blood of Christ shed for you, or simply saying, this is because God loves you so much, are all acceptable ways to share the elements of communion between us. Join us now with the hymn, Walk With Me. You can either sing, hum, or just in time to reflect and listen to the music. some final announcements for you today. Please join us following right after this service for a children's time. Today it is being led by Carrie Vinovich. Also, I want to remind you about our coffee hour, which will begin promptly at 1030. And finally, next Sunday is Mother's Day. And we will be celebrating Mother's Day in a unique fashion this year. So we're looking for some help. If you could please submit a photo of yourself with your mother, that would be wonderful. We're looking for those submissions by Wednesday, so get your cameras out and take some pictures, kids, with you and your mom. 
We look forward to celebrating next Sunday, Mother's Day, with you. Friends, as we walk the journey of following Christ, may we seek what we have in common and start there so that we can say yes to walking together on that journey, yes to walking together to strengthen and encourage each other from day to day. Amen. happy to be here bringing you our children's time this morning. So the Bible story today talks about the early church and what that was like. Have you ever experienced something that was so awesome that you just couldn't wait to tell someone else about it? That's kind of exactly what our story is about today. So God uses his church to spread blessings to others. So after Jesus rose from the dead and was taken up into heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to his disciples. And for the first time, God's spirit was within his people, which is pretty amazing. So the disciples were so excited about Jesus that they couldn't wait to start sharing the good news. They wanted to tell people about how Jesus died and rose from the dead and why that happened. The disciples also wanted to share how Jesus wanted to welcome others into God's kingdom so that they could experience a relationship with God. That's definitely good news to share. So in the Bible, we can read about the early church. It didn't look much like our church building today. The early church wasn't about a building. It was all about a community of people who believed in and were following Jesus. The people loved God and they loved each other. So when we think about that story that was shared today, the scripture, what are some ways that people took care of one another? Hmm. They prayed for one another and they helped those in need. They uh, sold their belongings and took the, the money from it and gave it to those who needed it. They shared food and clothing and homes. They fed others. And when they were all together to worship God, they ate and broke bread. They shared the good news. They prayed and they shared the love of God with each other. That's a lot like we do today, isn't it? God uses his church to spread blessings. And God used the early church to spread blessings to others so that the church could continue to grow. The Bible tells us that more and more people were believing in Jesus every day. God uses the church today for the same purpose. God wants his people to love him and to share his love with other people. Do any of you have trees in your yard? I have a few trees that are on the... Um, our yard line between us and our neighbors. What happens to those trees in the fall? Hmm. They, use, they lose their leaves, right? So at first it makes me kind of sad when all those leaves start falling. It means that it's the end of summer. And the leaves or the trees don't look as beautiful without their leaves. But you know what else is happening when those leaves are falling? As they fall, so do the seeds that make it possible for new trees to grow. So if my lovely trees never gave up their leaves, we wouldn't have any new trees come up. So our giving is a lot like the trees in our yard. When we give, we scatter our blessings to others, and in turn, those people are able to bless other people, and that keeps going. And that's how we, we share the love of God, and we grow the church of Jesus Christ. So for today's activity, what you can do is you can draw a tree. It can be a tree from your yard or just any tree. But you're going to make this tree um, a tree from in the fall. So it won't have very many leaves. And with those leaves, you're going to want to draw some leaves or some seeds on the ground to go with it. 
And what those leaves are going to represent are the blessings that we can share with other people. So I'll show you what I did and it'll make a little more sense. <clears throat> so I have share your blessings on there. And then if you look, I also have <clears throat> different ways that I can share my blessings with people. So I can volunteer, I can be kind, I can teach, I can offer prayers, I can give, and I can offer encouragement to my family and my friends and my faith community. And these are all things you can do too. But we each have different blessings and different gifts that we can give. So yours might be a little different than mine. And that's kind of the beauty of, of the family that we have is we all bring something different. And that grows and grows and grows into something beautiful. I would love to see your drawings of your trees are ways that you are spreading blessings to other people during this time where we cannot get into the building, but we are still the church. I love you all. I hope you're doing well. I can't wait till we can get back together. Go ahead and spread those blessings. Have a great week.